played in from right here. Uh, Sounds valuable. North of 20. <laughs> 20 million dollar credit line in your 20s. I took 300 some flights in one year. Probably spent no more than like $5,000. Pause the video, go apply and then come back. Hotels, travel, what's the best card for getting massive amount of points? Best three cards, I think that's a better question. Yeah. I would go for it. What's going on JR Business? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada, where you join me at the Credit Castle, Stephen Lau's insane mansion. It's like 23,000 square feet. I think it's like the second biggest house in Las Vegas. Here's the garage. Boom, we got the Lamborghini Huracan, of course, and we got the Model X, and we got Mr. Credit himself. Good to see you. How's the drive? So, you got a, a new toy there. Uh, drive was good, long five hour drive, but oh, what you got? What you got? I was about to oh, talk about this car. So, we got a uh, Ritz Carlton, as you guys know, he's got hundreds of credit cards, rewards cards. So Ritz Carlton Club Lounge. Sounds like a great thing to catch on fire. Oh, oh, oh. Woo. All right, now it's like 150 degrees right here. It's too hot. Let's go Ooh. All right, let's go inside, talk some credit. You guys have tons of questions from the last video we filmed together. So we're gonna answer some of those and dive into a bunch of good stuff. Talk about credit score, hacking your way with points, building up a good credit and a line of credit. One of my favorite parts of the house is this huge, I guess, triple level credit staircase, if you guys didn't realize. What's the craziest card up there? That's how credit uh, furnishes his house. I like it. So I mean, check out this view. You get lost easily. Kitchen's amazing. And the views are second to none. So anyway, we're gonna set up the camera right here and get into this video. So we're back for another video. It's actually almost a year to the date since we filmed the last video. And you all really, really liked the last video. You guys engaged with it and dropped a lot of comments saying you guys got some insightful information from it. It's only a year ago, but you still had an insane like line of credit. I think we said in that title like three or four million maybe, yeah. but now it's like up to like... North of 20. I don't know the exact number, but it's north of 20. All right. $20. So, north of $20. Yeah, about a $20 uh, credit line. <laughs> $20 million credit line in your 20s. $20 million credit line in your 20s. So we touched on that last video, kind of starting out, and a little bit of his story. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out, link down below. But like, you started out, like, your parents were like against credit, right? Like, don't get credit not cards, they're dangerous. Not against credit, but they're just like the average, like, middle class family, and they're like, you're not ready for a credit scared card. Scared about it. They're yeah. a little scared. Which most people are. Most people are just yeah. scared of credit. Not necessarily because they're scared of it, but people mm -hmm. around them are scared. I'm a rebel, sure. so like, I kind of. Okay, so you I went out. You went out there, started getting some credit cards. What was your first credit card? Was it like a good first one? Like, no, was, if people ask, what's the first card? Student card, yeah. Discover Student Card. Is that what you uh, recommend? Back then is what I would have recommended, but now like Chase has one too. Chase has a Student Freedom Card. You mm -hmm. have to go in branch. You can't apply for it online. You have to go in branch. But as long as you're a student, it's like a hands out card. Like, go. I, I think the oh. lowest credit limit I've seen was a hundred dollars. I didn't even know they had hundred dollar credit. Hundred dollar credit limit. Um, but it's literally like a starter card, and it's a great way to get your foot in the door and build relationships. <laughs> with Chase and I think after six months you get a you get a credit line increase as long as you paid all your bills on time. They do have student benefits. There's free money if you're just doing your schoolwork mm -hmm. and you're getting good grades. Like even in high school if you're towards the end like your senior year if you're 18 years old you could be earning uh, you know, $25. It's basically Chase's response to Discover to compete on the student level okay, because perfect. you have to understand like from a credit card company perspective, they want to make money off of you, uh, but they can never make money off you if you never carry a balance. So just get the credit card and don't even use it. Yeah. Just get the credit card and then use it. If you do use it, pay it right back. Don't wait like six months to pay it back because that's how they make money. They make money off the interest. Just use bucks. it sparingly. If you go to McDonald's and buy like a 10 piece chicken nugget or I think 20 pieces, four ninety nine. like, hey, millionaires can have uh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, eat McDonald's oh yeah. 20% keep utilization? 20%. Keep your utilization under 10%, but the 10. ideal one is zero. And so most people are like, well, mm. how am I supposed to keep a 0% utilization? Well, if you pay it off before your bill comes, it'll, it'll, that's what that's the number that counts. So for example, okay. let's say you have a $1,000 credit limit. If mm -hmm. you spend $900 and you wait till your statement comes, your utilization is 90%. And that's not good, so right? But if you pay off the $900 before your statement comes, you still spent the $900, but your statement's gonna show zero. But it looks good. And then on your credit report, it says 0%. So that's the trick. Like you can get credit cards, don't carry a balance. Um, okay, and that's my beginner's advice. The more advanced people, I'll say like, if you know how to carry a balance and arbitrage, uh, for arbitrage, for those of you guys that don't know the term, it's basically like if you're, if your return on a deal that you're investing or a product that you're buying, that you're flipping and selling, um, the return is greater than what you're paying the bank, then you can carry it. But that's something that I don't suggest you guys start with. Just start with paying your bills on time before they even come. Sure. People are probably wondering, how are you gonna get a higher credit limit if you're barely even using it? Like, you go to the bank and they're like, 
they're, you're not even using the car. You're keeping it so well, so low. Why do you want more the, money? The banks, so that's that's a common misconception. The banks aren't going to ask you like, oh, why aren't you using your card? And in fact, if you say, why aren't you using your card? The perfect comeback to mm. that question is, well, the credit limit you gave me is so low. I can't buy anything with it or I can't use it properly. So, but yeah. you can see in the past six months, I've paid all my bills on time. I've only used it very sparingly because you haven't given me any incentive to use the card. I want, like, say if you got the Chase uh, Freedom student card. Well, I want the Chase Sapphire preferred card or the Chase Sapphire reserve card, but you guys won't let me get that card because apparently, like, you know, I'm not good enough for you guys. It's a good counter mm. argument and you can call these people on the phone. It's called reconsideration. So even if you get denied, you can put up a case for yourself. Gotcha, like, so start out immediately. Just get a card. When you turn 18, ideally, in a perfect world, go get your card. On When you're 17 years old and 364 days, like when it strikes midnight, send in your application. If you guys are not 18. Wow. If you guys are over 18, I would suggest like pause the video, go apply, and then come back and keep watching. I'll put some links down below. Continuing in this perfect world, if you get that card, how much later down the road can you get one of those other Chase cards that you talked about? I would say- If you're doing everything perfect by the book, slow utilization. Doing it by the book, I would say six months is almost a solid six months. Um, you could do it sooner than that. It's just all about persistency and how badly and how desperately you want it. Where, where's your credit right now? Let's so as you guys know from last video, um, I am a bad example of what you should be doing. Uh, I rely too much on just like, oh, if you got cash, like you, you don't need credit. Like I just pay cash with a lot of things and I'm not getting any points on any purchases. Free rewards, you're losing money on, or at least losing out on like free travel. I, I'm missing out on so much stuff and I'm losing out on so much stuff. I think just you're just like, missing out on opportunity. Like uh, there's yeah. so much opportunity. Like I flew for an entire year. I took over 300 flights. There's only 365 days in a year. I counted. Like I went back and looked at all my boarding passes, tickets, private jet oh. itineraries. I took 300 some flights in one year and I probably spent, I would say, no more than like $5,000. Like that's just inclusive Boom. of like, I mean, some flights are $5,000 just on its own and I was flying for free basically. Go to seven countries in seven days and spend $7. Stay tuned. He may be launching a YouTube channel soon. I know last last year you were considering it. You said you wanted to, but now it's getting real. Okay, it well, so right now that you put in that perspective that I was talking about launching a YouTube channel last year and it still hasn't happened yet, I think like we yeah. should do a deal. I think you should get your credit right while I get my YouTube channel. Okay, hey, that's fair. That's fair. I just submitted, I don't have a good credit situation. I need to get on my game there. So we just have to like keep each other he needs to like get on his YouTube game. Right? Keep each other accountable. I like that. Yo, quick little interjection here from editing Jeffrey. It is currently 2.26 a.m. The night before, the morning before this video goes live. But as you saw there, Steven was getting on me for not having a credit card yet. I am happy to announce, guys. I finally got a credit card. So I'll talk more about it in a future video. I went ahead and got a secured credit card like I suggested earlier in this video. So a bunch of tips and tricks coming soon, but I just wanted to give you guys that update. And I hope to bring more credit videos to the channel, obviously with the help of Steven and giving all sorts of tips and tricks. He was holding me accountable for my credit situation. Now I gotta hold him accountable for the YouTube situation, but uh, hopefully he'll be launching one soon. So let's get back into the video. Speaking of points and hacking the travel and all that stuff, I know we didn't touch on that much last video, but hacking hotels, travel, what's What's the best card for getting massive amount of points? There's not really like one card. It's like, for example, like what's the best tool for your car? You you have a tool shed and you open yeah. it up and like there's a hammer. So okay. you, you got a tool shed in your wallet? Yeah, so you have a tool shed in my wallet here with all my I see cards. a bunch of different cards. I have like a black card. Honestly, for you guys that don't know what a black card is, it's not worth getting. It's literally just like a jewelry status. Yeah. Thing. It does have an infinite credit line. You still need to pay it back, so it doesn't really help that much. Mm -hmm. But I would say the best three cards, I think that's a better question. I think it's like the best okay. three cards. Yeah. I would go for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. It's a hard goal, but it's an attainable goal. So like, I like to set goals that are attainable. I don't like to set goals that are like, oh, like it's impossible to get. Chase yeah. Sapphire Reserve, it's a 450 annual fee, but the rewards just when you hit the first like bonus, it's gonna be worth like $1,500 right off the bat. So it pays for itself. Like it comes with wow. $300 of travel credit. So it's a $450 annual fee, but $300 immediately you can use it towards airlines okay. and everything. So boom, or like Ubers, whatever. Like Chase Sapphire Reserve is a good card. Um, the next card I would say, the American Express Gold Card slash Rose Gold Card, if you've seen like some friends have it. Mm -hmm. It earns 4X uh, a membership rewards points. It's Amex's like point structure. Typically points go for one to one. So one point equals one cent. Uh, some rewards program, one point could equal five cents. They're like, there's a, we call it CPP, cents per point. Like that's the okay. value of it. The Amex 
Rex Rose Gold card earns 4x back on restaurants. That's the highest one at anywhere goes. Whoa. And it's pretty easy to get approved for because it's a charge card. So it gets you your foot in the door and starts building a relationship. These two cards I like. The Chase Sapphire Reserve, great for travel. The Amex uh, Rose Gold slash Gold card. Or about Amex eating. Platinum. Um, the Platinum's good as well. Um, but so like the three cards I would say to like have a goal for. Right. Platinum is good, but kind of overlaps into Chase Sapphire Reserve. Okay. But I would say, All you right. know, the Amex Platinum Schwab edition. So the Charles Schwab edition, um, which kind of ties into the best bank account. The best bank Sweet. account I would say is the Charles Schwab High Yield Investors Checking Account. We'll have all these links down below. Holy but um, you I'm need learning. to actually have the Charles Schwab Investment Brokerage account. You get a $300 okay. for signing up. Literally no strings attached, nothing. All you have to do is open the account and put a dollar in. You take that bank account, it qualifies it. You need to have a Schwab account to open a Schwab American Express Platinum card. So those three, that's a trifecta. Like honestly, wow. if I didn't have a black card or any of the like the bougie, crazy, mm -hmm. like ten thousand dollar annual fee cards, those, those three would be the three. Um, those would be the three. And the Chase Sapphire Reserve, um, it's like it's not something you would just get approved for as the first card. You want to build a relationship with Chase first. So maybe start with the Chase Freedom Unlimited, Freedom Card, or the Freedom Student Card, build your relationship that way. The Amex Rose Gold card, you should have no problem getting approved for just because it's a charge card, which means means you have to pay, you have to, you can't even carry a balance, you have to pay at the end of every month. So the sure. risk on Amex's part is very minimal, so they're willing to extend you a charge card. Yeah, because, I've seen some young people get their proof yeah, so the, no problem. Amex Rose Gold card, honestly, that could be a really good second card. Like if you're not playing something called the five and 24 rule with Chase, uh, I go over more of that on my uh, Instagram and potentially my YouTube. Yes. Um, so, but the, the, the Amex Rose Gold card, great card to get approved for. Honestly, that would be a good daily user. Like, you just go and go to McDonald's, go to your food cafe, so you, you go to whatever, any restaurants you're earning 4X back, and all those wow. points rack up very quickly. Wow, like, wow. for example, if you use the, just an everyday normal card, you'd get $1. So it's like well, you're one, one four, point four percent. Yeah, you're getting four percent back um, on points. points. But the thing is, MR points are actually traditionally valued even more than one percent per point. So like, it's the the highest cash value you can get it out for is one point two five. So like, four X back would essentially five. becomes five percent back. Five percent cash food. back. So I mean, yeah, you spend a hundred bucks, you get five dollars back. Right Holy there. cow! So you can go. Maybe a good setup would be going from like a, that student card. To one to that card to uh, Amex Rose Gold card, yeah. and when you get you and this is, is like we're talking for the average user, so like this is yeah, this is like a perfect. Got it. I want to I want to go do this stuff right now. I want right. I want five percent cash back and on it food. Comes with I've a, been it comes with a bonus, like time. it comes with like a ten thousand point bonus or a fifty thousand point bonus, even like it depends like when you apply. There's times that you apply uh, when the bonus is high. And Amex and, works with American Airlines, like uh, points, Amex you can book works flights. with Delta. And oh, they work with American Airlines International, but they don't work with it domestically. Uh, the one thing about the Schwab Platinum okay. card, we didn't really talk about that. It's a 550 annual fee, but it gets you into Centurion Lounge. So if you ever see those people like walk into their, like Centurion black card lounges at the airports, they, they they have it at SFO, they're building one at LAX, they have one in Dallas, they have one in Miami, they have one in JFK. All these major wow. airports have these things called Centurion Lounges. You go in, you get a free massage, you get a free meal. You can take a shower. They ha they literally have a robe for you. They like have all these like Ooh. lavender. And what seats. cards gets you in there? The Platinum card, Amex Platinum card. Any Platinum card, but my favorite but version is the Schwab. Also Platinum. the Schwab card gets you in there. It's, it's, it looks exactly the same, except it has Charles Schwab written on there. The cool part about wow. all this, all three of these cards are metal. So if you want to oh, have okay, like a metal cool. credit card, that, like that. that should be the selling feature. Literally today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go apply. Like, what am I doing? I wasted over a year of my life without yeah. credit cards and missing out on 5% on food and all this stuff. Oh, this is eye-opening for me. I hope it is for you guys, too. When they're looking at credit cards, how do they know if it's a good credit card? How do you know if it's a bad one? What Here's the, the thing. Things? Here's my thing. Your first credit card doesn't matter. You just need a first credit card because the okay. good cards, like they, they want to see something because you're just getting that first credit card just to it. prove that you can manage credit. Then you can start negotiating. If you don't even have a credit card, it's very hard to like just get approved yeah. for a good credit card. There's one company I would just be wary of. Credit One, do not like look at this. It's different than Capital One. Capital One, great bank, great company. Uh, just be wary of Credit One because they have right. a ton of hidden fees. If you go and like, they'll approve you for sure, but their annual fee is like a hundred bucks a year and they give you a $200 credit line and their interest rate stacks up daily. So just be wary. Let's say your first card, don't get one with an annual fee either. Get a simple credit card. Discover it, Chase Freedom Student, Chase Freedom Unlimited, no Chase Freedom. Fee. So if you guys are out there 17 years old, turning 18, you heard him. The day before you turn 18, get ready to go. Second 
checking midnight hits, send in that application. Uh, student card could be a great place to start. Then maybe work your way up the food chain with other Chase cards if you're going the Chase route or look into the Amex card, the yep. Charge card. I think that's a good route. I think that's what I want to do is my second card, that one. It's a good card to pull out. It's metal. You just pull it out. It's, it looks it's, cool. It's sexy. And then we can start building up some points, cash back. To so all the people who wonder why you have how many credit cards or have had Two, over the years? 220 some credit cards. What do you say to people who say why? It's a hobby, right? Like you collect coins, you collect cards, I collect True. credit cards. Okay. I got into it because the first time I got a credit card, it came in a really nice package and I opened it. I got so excited. I was like, I really want to feel this feeling again. So I just got addicted to the process. I just going, kept getting going, more and more going, credit going. cards. To a point where like I actually have like a Victoria's Secret credit card just because I want just because I wanted to like have one. It's another card to collect. But like I've collected almost gotcha. every single credit card there's possibly out there. Perfect. Like I have the most prestigious, like the hardest ones to get invite only credit cards, like the black card, I have the black business card, I have the black corporate card, I have the JP Morgan Palladium card or reserve card. Palladium? It's the reserve card. Now. Is it made out of palladium? Yeah, you, uh, it might still Palladium's be. worth a ton of money nowadays. I know my metals. Palladium didn't used to be worth a ton, but it's oh, shot up lately. The, the, the Palladium card right here. Yeah. Sounds valuable. That's something to like keep in mind if you guys for like entrepreneurs out there. You don't have to copy someone else. Like you don't have to do credit. You don't have to do cars. You just have to find something that you're so passionate about doing. Like for credit cards, I was up till mm -hmm. 4 a.m. like trying to figure out what's the next card to apply for. Them. Not because I felt like it was work or because it was like cool to do, but because I just really enjoyed it. So like if you guys That's have a cars, hobby yeah. that you guys are doing, yeah. Keep doing it and just get good at it. Figure out like next goals in whatever hobby you're doing and maybe one day someone will pay you to do it. Some, or maybe one day you can teach people how to do it and people will pay you to teach them. But at the end of the day, like you're not losing out because you were doing it for fun anyway. So even if you don't get paid for it, you still enjoyed it. Turn your passion into profit. I like that. And the last, last group of people who we maybe left out on the video, the people who have credit, they have cards, but it's damaged and they've done a lot of bad things. The best route for recourse, how to get back on the right track. There's a site, it's a federal website called CFPB.gov. CFPB. It stands for Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. In the description. It's a government website, CFPB.gov. Um, I would look into just seeing how you can uh, like open dialogue with the banks. Like most people don't even know about opening okay. dialogue with the banks. They're like, they're huge corporate companies. I don't even know how, don't to, how to, to talk to them. Okay. CFPB makes it so that they have to reply to you within 15 days or else they get hit with a huge fine. They're going to reply to you. 93% of people that like submit a claim get some kind of good resolution or some kind of satisfying resolution. So at the end of the day, it might not like erase or fix your entire credit, but at least get the ball rolling and you could figure something out. And then start working on that utilization, like you said, and avoiding interest at all costs. What are these days? 17%, 20%? It could always be. Higher. Like I like the new Apple card. Be careful of that card. It's like twenty five dot nine nine. Like people are getting approved for like a two hundred dollar credit limit, but it's a twenty five percent interest Jeez. rate. So meaning, like for you guys who that don't that don't like understand the interest rates, like say mm. like you owe a hundred dollars. Next month you'll owe one hundred twenty five dollars. Like so, you just point up twenty five percent on like your total like oh that's the interest that's, rate. Like, and then you get a huge hole, and then you spiral. Yeah, it keeps, into you're one hundred twenty five. You, if you can't afford to pay that, well, and you yeah. just pay the minimum and the minimum. The scariest and the minimum. thing, though, one of the yeah. last things I'm going to tell you guys, the scariest yes. thing is people get credit cards because they're desperate and in need. That's the they worst time. Money. That's the worst time to get a credit card and to okay. put stuff on credit cards. In fact, if you're in that position, I would still suggest getting a credit card. But as soon as you get it, just cut it up. Don't even be tempted. Never use cut it. up the credit card and like throw it away. Like literally, you don't need that credit card you just need it being reported onto your credit report once you get back in a better financial position then consider like trying out credit but like a lot of people get tempted they're like they open up a credit card oh they see five hundred dollars uh -huh. their bank account is under a hundred dollars like Huge. oh i really need this and then they buy it that's not a good position to be because then interest rates start you might end up paying four times the amount than what you actually owe so if you don't have the money don't be using a credit card. Right. I've, I was never in that position. I learned from go. my mentors, but I see too many people, they're scared. Like Uncle John is telling you, don't get a credit card. And the reason they're scared is because they screw up their credit like that. That's how they got into a hole because they got into credit card debt. Um, they were enticed to buy all these things, all these bonuses, and then they get screwed. Boom. Use credit to your advantage. I guess if you look at the big picture, like the credit card companies are making so much money off these people yeah. doing it wrong. Right. So when you do it right, you get a little You want to leverage money. and use the bank. You don't want the bank to use you, right? You want to make money off the bank. You go. don't want the bank to make money off of you. I like it. That's a good way to um, end it. There you guys have it. We talked about all three kind of brackets. If you're just starting out, not even 18 yet, what to do. If you're just starting out like me and still don't have a credit card, but are 18, I know what I'm going to get doing tonight. And if you're already there, but have some damaged 
uh, history, that's a great way to get going on the right direction, get your, get your train back on the tracks. So there you guys have it. Check out his YouTube channel if it is live. If it is live, it'll be linked down below. Instagram, at credit if you want to see more. On yes. The waving annual fees. At credit, simple as that. Give him a follow. He's always doing cool stuff. And drop a comment down below future questions or video ideas. If you guys drop additional credit questions down below, the next time we film a credit video, we'll look at this video's comment section and take questions from there. So drop them down below and future video ideas. We'd be happy to make those. So subscribe if you're new so that you don't miss them. Thank you so much once again. Always a pleasure, always eye-opening for me and I hope it is for you guys too. Thank you for watching. We're gonna go explore around Las Vegas and have a good day. See you next time.